working, and today is still the 26th. Fantastic. Good morning. My name is Sean Shapiro. I'm joined by Chief James Raymer of the Toronto Police Service uh, in studio, and we're talking about uh, traffic uh, policing, uh, stuff you want to know. So if you've got questions, please use the Q&A function uh, on Instagram, TikTok, or enter it into the chat. If you're watching on Twitter, that doesn't work. So use the uh, link in the link tree, to, uh, which is in the bio, to actually go out and join us either on TikTok or the other platforms where the Q&A does work. So uh, we're, we're here for as long as, well, I'll be here for at least an hour, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get the chief to stay as long as he's able to, and he's a busy person, so uh, we can't, we can't uh, you know, keep him through... Uh, Beyond, beyond meetings. So I see that we've got questions already coming in. Uh, oh, I don't know if that, that's an interesting question. So oldest cop hired with the TPS. Do you know who the uh, oldest new hires mean? Um, you know, I, I can't give you the definitive number, but we've actually had um, uh, officers hired in their 50s. And the most recent graduating class had uh, at least one in their 40s. So, but I, I, I believe the oldest might have been around 55. I think in my class there was somebody in 50 or 51, uh, and, and I wasn't that old, but now I'm approaching that age. So, uh, you know, that's still a good age. And the average, I think, is about 30. Uh, it, it, at least it has been over the years. It has been. We, we, you're starting to see that number uh, progress a little bit downward now. Uh, we're starting to look at people a little bit younger that are beating the criteria and, and uh, you know, successfully passing the uh, psychologist uh, testing and everything. So yeah, it's it's probably coming down a little bit, maybe averaging say in the 27, 28 range. Right on. That's uh, that's great, you know, and, and it's a great segue into the fact that we are hiring. And uh, if you go to www.tps.ca uh, forward slash careers, you can get all the information uh, that you need to know about becoming a member of the Toronto Police Service. And uh, the, the fact is we are actively hiring. Yes, yeah, significantly hiring both um, police officers and uh, special constables and matter of fact we were just talking about looking at some of the budget items there yesterday and you know we, we hire police officers three times a year to go to Elmer and in April August and December and we anticipate uh, we would like to get as long as there's the capacity at the college to get 120 hired uh, for each of those uh, three classes going forward in 2023 that's uh, that's awesome the uh, if you're interested if you have if you if you have a desire to be a police officer now is an excellent time to apply it's it's it just uh, you know I remember when I was applying it was thousands of applications for very few positions but with just just with the way things are working with retirements and the age of the average officer now it's really good timing to apply uh, let's see here. We have a question about, oh, The Rock was in town and uh, and uh, did a number of things. I think he was promoting his new movie. Did you get to meet The Rock? No, actually I didn't. And I have to tell you, <laughs> probably like your caller, I would have loved to have had the opportunity to do that. I was actually away in Dallas uh, at the International Association of Chiefs of Police that week, so I wasn't here anyways. But uh, oh, That's too bad. Yeah, I, I would have loved fan, to have met him too. Fan, yeah, uh, The Motor Squad got to meet him, and I'm, I'm a little bit jealous. A little bit. <laughs> Uh, okay, what's uh, oh what's going on with all the gun violence in Toronto? Yeah, no, it, it definitely is a significant issue that uh, we're putting uh, uh, many resources into. But it really is a, uh, you know, it's uh, every level of government has to be involved in in this, and and the city is, is contributing budget wise, and so is the province. And I know the federal government is is working on it as well. But we we have to do more to prevent. The, the illegal firearms that are coming across the border from the United States. I mean, that is a simple reality. Over 90% of the crime guns being used in, in the city of Toronto and, and for much of the province is are coming from the United States. And so we're working with our U.S. partners, quite frankly. They're well aware of it, doing more work with, with us than they have ever before to try to stem that tide. But it is a, a very significant issue that is our number one priority. Absolutely. Uh, we have a question about going back to the uh, hiring. Is there an age limit to be hired? Uh, actually, um, uh, I, I don't think there's actually a, a limit. I mean, that was, you know, you used to, there was a time where, uh, like when I started, along with height requirements, you couldn't be uh, older than 35. Well, that oh, wow. has changed. And like I said, I think the oldest we may have had is 55. And you're really subject to the very demanding uh, physical mm -hmm. testing uh, requirements in particular once you get older and and so that's probably the most difficult hurdle in trying to do it but there really is not 
if you can pass the test and you yeah. can make the grade, then then it yeah. really has uh, uh, up to about that age is is what we've seen someone being successful at. Awesome. Uh, there's a question about automated speed enforcement. They want to know if, if you can get uh, demerit points. And I can just quickly answer the fact that now there's no demerit points for automated speed enforcement. It's only a police officer to issue tickets that have that, uh, that consequence. Uh, okay. We've talked about that. Uh, we have a question of, oh, why doesn't the Toronto police have their own helicopter? That, that's a question that came in through Volley earlier. Um, well, you know, the, the, it's not that it hasn't been uh, looked at. I mean... Uh, in the early 2000s, when uh, Chief Fantino was here, they did a pilot for about six months. Uh, I know there was a lot of a pushback from the community about noise levels. Uh, I know there were issues with uh, flight paths at the airport. Um, uh, when, when Chief Blair uh, became chief, it moved away from uh, that pilot and uh, made no efforts really to, to operate with a helicopter. We do have the benefit uh, of of uh, using helicopters in York and Durham on occasion when we need them and in the OPP for that matter as well. And uh, we, do, we do do that. And, and that's something that I think people need to understand is that, um, you know, we really do force multiply as police organizations. We're very integrated. So some have helicopters, some have mounted units as we do. We currently have just had our mounted officers in Kingston assisting the Kingston Police Service. Everybody knows back in February they were in Ottawa. So we support other services with uh, some of our infrastructure and then other services will likewise support us. And, and uh, so that works very, very effectively for us. I think with the advent to currently, uh, you know, with drones and things of that nature, um, we're able to do some of the things with drones that Previously, it had been done solely by helicopter, so that's that's been a key feature. And, and that's amazing. I, I've seen some recent footage that was shared with me uh, for a major events that we were part of, and it's so crisp, it's so clean, and it's a tiny little device. It's, it, it's really amazing. Uh, I mean, I remember remote-controlled cars and, and planes when I was a kid, and uh, there was no uh, video being sent back, and this stuff's doing movie-quality shooting. It's fa I, I, it, That's my new hobby. I've got to get one. Yeah, no, the technology is, is improving rapidly all the time. I like it, uh, and uh, the only thing is that it's it's harder to to bypass traffic in a drone. <laughs> you can't go anywhere any faster, but uh, at least no no, no distance. Uh, what uh, what happened to Blinky, the Toronto police car? Um, we do have Blinky. He's he's parked in the back. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, and I'm just trying to was think of the most recent event. I mean, perhaps you haven't seen him as much just over the last couple of years because of COVID. And we haven't had the opportunity to be out at an events, but no, Blinky is very much alive and well. And uh, you'll see as we get involved in different community events more now, uh, you'll 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 see him back out there again. Yeah, no, he's he's. I, I remember being a kid uh, at school and having Blinky show up and doing it was a whole presentation. It was it was a big part of of being a kid in the uh, in the eighties. Uh, but uh, yeah, we we can't get enough of Blinky. Uh, maybe we need a, an updated Blinky. He's, he's not. A, he's not as modern a car anymore. Uh, but uh, because I, I think most people seeing Blinky in his current state would say that that's a car that they've never seen before. It's a. It's an. It's an older '80s vehicle, but uh, still awesome. Uh, let's see here. Okay, we have. Uh, does uh, so we, recently we've had a lot of questions about this. I, I've done some presentations and I've been asked the same question. Does Vision Zero work? I, I believe it does, and that's why we're committed to it. Um, you know, it, to me, it's it's really a combination of the newer technology now with cameras. Uh, I'd like to see some additional cameras, particularly the one uh, that I'd like to see implemented is a, um, a not stopping before making a right turn on a red light. A huge uh, impact with particularly pedestrian traffic, and uh, it's frequent. You see it everywhere that it's happening. Uh, but you know what? You need you need the officer on the ground, the enforcement, because there's things that are that are not seen by camera or cannot be observed by camera, and uh, it needs to be the type the type of enforcement that only a police officer can do. And the reality is, when there is no threat of enforcement for lack of a better word, and people feel that they can operate with impunity, the driving behavior gets worse. And I'll give you a specific example. It's like speed on the highways. Mm -hmm. You drive on an interstate in the United States, you know there is a state trooper every couple of miles and he has radar. And people will drive accordingly. Because if you don't, you're getting stopped. 
There's the perfect example of what enforcement does when people have an understanding of being caught. And, and so that's a, that's a reality. And, and so I think there's, it, there's a very, very important role and, and it will save lives because preventing that type of, because uh, we've all seen the type of, some of the driving behavior that's out there. It's funny you bring up uh, the, the whole right turn on red situation. I've had a number of people reach out to me and they were baffled uh, by the fact that they received red light tickets uh, from the automated enforcement when they made right turns. And my question is, did you stop for the red light? And they said, no. There, there's a, there seems to be a lack of education or understanding, and that's what we do so much of what we do uh, to, to narrow the gap and, and explain things. But they were unaware, and they're licensed drivers who are unaware that you have to stop for a right turn on. Well, you know, I, it's, it's absolutely true, and I, I, I understand there's some frustration with people, but I'm seeing people making right turns at uh, relatively high speed. And, and the potential of going through, they're not stopping. There's just so many things that can happen. And, it, and it's, it's quite frankly wrong and it's very dangerous. We, we see a lot of minor things and uh, our focus has been, especially with the Vision Zero Enforcement team to, to, uh, team to look at you know, aggressive driving, speeding, uh, distracted driving, impaired driving, those things that, that lead to serious injury and death. And I think for many people, they think that the other stuff's just not important or we're, we're not enforcing it because it's not the focus of what we do. But we still enforce everything. It's just that we, we target things to keep people safe. That's correct. It's, um, it, but it is frustrating. You know, we see a lot of people with, uh, with little things, like peeling plates, something that, 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 that frustrates us, and, and uh, we, we do issue tickets for that. Uh, it's just not the number one priority. That's right, and, 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 and I, I encourage people, get your plates replaced after they've been out there a certain period of time. It's frankly, it's your responsibility. And, uh, you know, these are the type of vehicles that uh, suddenly they're involved in the fail to remain, and, and there are people and witnesses nearby, and they, they can't have any description of the vehicle simply because the plates aren't proper. The, you need to have readable plates. And it's, uh, you know, I know with the ministry, uh, they give you a five-year warranty, and, and uh, after the five years, uh, if your plate is unreadable, then it's your responsibility to replace it. And it's only $52. I mean, that may be a lot of money for some people, but $52 is certainly better than the, the $110 uh, in plus plus for, for uh, you know, not dealing with it. Well, it's and part of your responsibility as a user on the roadway, right? And, and it's, frankly, it's part of your responsibility. And, and, and and the service, sorry, and the province is now not even charging you to renew it. So you've got this this uh, uh, newfound money from not having to renew. You can certainly invest in uh, keeping your plates up to date and, and legible. Uh, just for anyone who's tuning in and doesn't know who I am or who's standing next to me, my name is Sean Shapiro. I'm a police constable with the Toronto Police Service. We go on social media Monday to Friday for Ask a Traffic Cop, answering your traffic and police questions. And joining me in studio today is Chief James Raymer of the Toronto Police Service. He's the big boss. And uh, he's, he's come by, a, yeah, this I think, your fourth time on today. TikTok and, and on social media with us. So thank you again for uh, for joining us. It's an honor. Uh, now we have questions that are coming in. Oh, we have a, just a quick couple of things. Sean Chen says hello. Rob Baker says good morning. Big Jeff Fresh and Akila Draconis and Tracy Bell. All regular viewers who uh, who are giving you uh, shout outs and uh, and, and uh, greetings. Uh, let's see here. We have. Yeah, okay. Some things, uh, well, there's a question about the, the limit to the brightness of headlights, and I'll, I can address it really quickly. Yeah, you, you, there's such a thing as having improper headlights that are too bright. Uh, that's why you can't drive with your high beams on, but uh, there are some lights that are not legal. Uh, we got here, what car have you caught the most? Well, you, you've recently had some, uh, some vehicle stops uh, with, with your car. <laughs> Yeah, actually, uh, I, I mean, I, from my perspective, since um, I haven't issued a ticket in a very long time, <laughs> and, and um, uh, but we have, uh, my security team has, has made some stops, uh, particularly on the 407, and, and I find it's a range of vehicles that, uh, you know, we've actually stopped. There's no one particular vehicle, but uh, from my perspective, anyways, it seems that uh, you can be... You know, with the engineering now, some of these small cars, four cylinders, will will move at a very good speed, and so oh, yeah. uh, it, it really, I think, depends on the driver. But uh, well, I, I always say it's it's irrelevant what the vehicle is; it's the behavior that we're stopping. That's correct. Uh, it, yeah. It's it's really. Uh, I I don't think even when I was on the road, and I haven't been on the road for some time, um, that there was a particular maker model that was more a violator than others. It was just whatever was you know doing it in front of me. I think maybe we think back to. The old days, and when I think of it, back when I was younger, you'd see all of these, uh, you know, different uh, cars like the Barracudas and all of that, and they were all, 
you know, done up differently, big tires and exhausts, and you don't see as much as that anymore, right? Those are rare. It's more like, it's more people like my generation having collectibles now, right? It's yeah. Like, you don't really see those as much, right? But I think with engineering now, cars can just, are so fast. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, here, here's a good question from Crystal, who's uh, not in Toronto, but uh, but re regularly comes to watch the show. Uh, the question says, Chief, this is not about traffic, but is there more police officers being trained to respond to children or adults with special needs? I know the community policing is, uh, is there, but uh, you really don't see, at least where I live, a lot of community police officers. Yeah, actually, that, that that's a great question. Um, I mean, the, our, our neighborhood community, community officers are really one of the, the, the best features we have as an organization, and it's the way we want to go in policing. Unfortunately, we, we just don't have the numbers currently to expand beyond the neighborhoods we have. Ideally, we'd like to be in all of the neighborhoods uh, across the city. Um, and they are, they're very well trained. They, they create great relationships with the community. And then, you know, we also have working with our, the MCIT, our officers and our nurses that are specially trained to deal with different community crisis issues. And, um, uh, and because of the lack of availability on the night shift for some of the nurses, we're training more of our officers with this enhanced mental health and community crisis training so that there's more available to attend the type of uh, different events that uh, perhaps you're describing. Um, we're, we're really trying to make headway. And then, of course, we have our partnership with the city and our Gerstein pilot and our communications where we're using social workers to do a lot of calls where police officers are not required. So it's really a, a number of things that are, are currently underway that's helping us to be a better police service and uh, for the community to be served even better. Those teams do amazing work. Yeah, they really do. Um, there's a couple of questions, some that are, that are very much uh, about you, and then there's one here about photo. So we'll, get, we'll talk about this one first, I think. Photo radar machines keep getting vandalized, and I, I imagine they want to know what we're doing about it. <laughs> well, well, uh, um, <clears throat> the, the um, it, it's yeah, it's it's definitely happening. I, I think it's uh, uh, some frustration on, uh, on on some people in the community. Uh, maybe in particular neighborhoods i'm 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 really not sure i mean it's it's not something we do respond when we have to uh, attend but it's it's certainly uh, uh not at the top of the list of things that we need to get to in terms of police priorities so what we need is security cameras for the photo cameras yeah, <laughs> cameras for the yeah, cameras kind of. it, it is amazing is that you know it, it, it's interesting that people are so upset by the fact that they're getting tickets for breaking the law that they choose to break the law to try and prevent them from getting caught it's it's a funny circle. Uh, Chase asked a question uh, wanting to know what makes TPS a un unique from other police services? Um, you know what, I, I don't know uh, if I would describe us as unique as other services because policing is so similar uh, across the province, the country, and, and indeed North America. As I said earlier, I was at the, the U.S. conference last week and with a number of Canadian chiefs as well, and, and we all, you know, come away from there saying everything is so similar in terms of what we're dealing with across North America. But I think in terms of Toronto, say within the province of Ontario, uh, we're bigger, we're more diverse, um, uh, by the, because of the nature of the city, because we're the home of the Blue Jays and the Raptors and the Maple Leafs, and, um, you know, just major community events, the Pride Parade, we're just larger and have different things to deal with. We had the Rolling Loud uh, concert uh, for the three-day weekend in September. Those are types of things that I think tr make Toronto different. We're, we're more in the spotlight that way because of the major events, the, you know, the, the fourth biggest city in North America, very dynamic city. And, and, and I, I think that, if I was going to use the word unique, it's more about size and scope than it is about the type of policing that we're doing. Well, we have that population density that flexes every day for people who live elsewhere and come to work here, so our numbers go up and down. We have, we have some unique, I guess, uh, yeah. situations that way. And as you said, all those festivals, which really make Toronto awesome. Yeah. I, 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 there's so much going on here. Uh, it, another uh, a question uh, from Chase was, what uh, are some day-to-day -day tasks as a chief that you deal with? What's, what's sort of your day look like? Oh, well, it, it's, um, I mean, I, I suppose if you look at, if we just pick out any day, I mean, I start with briefings in the morning about what's happened across the city, uh, particularly overnight since, uh, you know, I went home the last evening and, um, <clears throat> and that day will start that way. And then it's usually, uh, quite frankly, a, a series of meetings. Uh, 
uh, about uh, things that are underway in, in the city, with the community, uh, with our partners, um, you know, whether it's with, with mental health issues, whether it's the opioid crisis, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, purchases that we have to make in the organization, our own administration. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of um, uh, community events. Uh, that I that uh, that I attend to, and I was at uh, actually I was at the uh, Friends of Simon Wiesenthal uh, Center uh, gala event last night, uh, as an example, as, as some of the things that we regularly do working with our community it was just a absolutely terrific event. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was the was oh, the guest speaker, right? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it was uh, an incredible event. So I mean, that's sort of like the the typical day, and then and then uh, quite frankly, we're always having to look at. Uh, mitigating risk in the organization uh, and in terms of how our officers are, are, are behaving, their conduct, um, and what can we do better? How can we train them, give them better tools to do their job? So we're always uh, uh, assessing what's happening out there with our, you know, our college staff and, you know, our senior management team. So th these are the type of things that are the regular part of the day. Uh, they, everybody ultimately reports to you, so you've got a lot of a lot of things, a lot of balls in the air. Uh, we've got a question about uh, about both of us. To, did both of us attend OPC, the Ontario Police College? And I, I did. Yes, I did. It, it is a requirement to graduate from there to become a, a police officer in the province of Ontario. I, I started there in, in I think August of 1980 and graduated in February of 81. Uh oh, we had a, we had a we had something go on here. We'll jump back in. TikTok crashed. Resume. We are back. There was a, a, a technical hiccup. Uh, TikTok crashed. I think Not, we're going to have to invest in some of the work you're doing here. We, we may need more <laughs> stuff. <laughs> well, we'll work at it. I, I try. I try. I try and do all this stuff with as little money spending as possible. You know, occasionally people come up and say, you know, how how can you be spending uh, tax dollars to be on TikTok and 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 talk about uh, traffic? They see that many people think that this is something that we do for fun or that's that's not policing and not education. And and I, I, I really welcome those conversations because we we talk about just how many people we help on a regular basis. Uh, and uh, amazingly, our reach has gone so far beyond that of just Toronto. You know, we, we're obviously when we go to shows and events, uh, historically, we talk to, you know, a, a few hundred people over a weekend or, or maybe a few thousand people. Uh, we'll, we'll be well over 10,000 people that we're speaking to just on TikTok alone today. We have almost 600,000 followers now. It's it's truly amazing. But uh, we always get those few people who say this is, this is an inappropriate, uh, you know, spending or, or waste of time. No, well, I mean, that's unfortunate to have that view, but I mean, this is a great program. It's a great in terms of education. It's great to understand uh, and answer the questions and understand what the community is asking about, what they're concerned about, and we can educate them, have a little bit of, create more of a relationship uh, with the police and an understanding of the work that we do. It's an outstanding program, and that's actually, frankly, why I'm here, Sean, and why we're going to try to make some efforts to get you some enhanced tools here to, to do the job that you That's do. fantastic. Thank you, sir. Uh, we, we, uh, what was the question? It just popped up. It looked interesting. Oh, somebody said Canada is cool. Uh, that was a comment that just sl slid by. I guess, I guess being that you're, you know, seeing the, the chief of police on, on uh, TikTok is, is, is impressive. And I, I don't think anybody else has, has ever done it. I don't know if any, there's any other chiefs uh, that, that come on on a regular basis and spend time on social media. So it's, it's really, it is cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Jace, who's coming in from uh, Saskatchewan, uh, wants to know how long it took you to work your way up to the rank of chief? Well, that's a, that's a good question too. It took, a, for me, it was, it was a long time. I mean, I, I, um, I'm retiring at the end of the year and uh, that'll be about 42 and a half year service. And so at about two and a half years as chief. So uh, uh, I, I'd say 40 years, but um, um, I mean, it's not in a position I aspire to and I, I was sort of fortunate to get asked to, to do it for a while. But uh, the, the reality is, um, uh, you know, moving up in the organization generally, you know, to become a senior officer, it's about 20 years service. Uh, and that's the rank of inspector, and and that that's really probably the average across the organization. And then you're then you're moving. We used to have staff inspector. Now we we move directly to superintendent rank, chief superintendent, deputy chief. So you move through that, and and um, uh, you know it, it, it's uh, it, it's generally a, a long period of of uh, and it was longer in, in my generation. There was more ranks. 
and and uh, people, um, you know, were it was just a different generation where we had many more people moving through. Now in policing, uh, people are are being promoted much more quickly. The baby boomer generation is leaving. Uh, there's lots of change, and uh, so we're having to get people ready much more quickly. We're moving them around much more quicker than we used to in the past. You know, I've had some counselors say to me, "Oh, we've that's a great inspector, and you're already moving them." And say, so, "Yeah, I know, but we have to go and we have to give them oppor other opportunities to develop, so they can have they they require the, the knowledge, skills, and ability to achieve a, a, a the next rank and, and succession plan in the organization." So it's just really changed. Uh, uh, so I, I wouldn't necessarily be the um, uh, the, the model in terms of uh, time. I, it was much longer uh, in, in going through the different ranks. There has been a trend of, of uh, some very young chiefs in in in, in, in comparison to the yesteryear. Uh, so I, I think uh, we we have a chief that's in his forties uh, in, in Ontario. Yes. Yep. Yes, we do. Yeah, and and I think you're going to see more of that uh, uh, in the future as well, right? Uh, uh, later half of the 40s, uh, uh, early 50s, uh, you'll you'll see chiefs. Yeah. We've got a question asking if you've ever worked for any other service. No, I have not. I mean, I've I've worked as part of uh, joint forces units where I've worked with uh, other services like the OPP and the RCMP together, but I've always been a member of the Toronto Police Service. The uh what about speaker at night? Are you talking? They might be asking if we're doing this event at night. Is that what you mean? Uh, if so, we I generally work from six to two, so this usually happens as a morning thing. Uh, but, but you know, we've done some some afternoon uh, and evening things, so we'll, we'll see. We might be able to do that in the future. Uh, let's see here. We have oh, what's your favorite sports team? That's come up a couple of times. Um, well, it's the <laughs> Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> Always has been. Um, I think I was. You know, about eight years old, the last time they won. But uh, nonetheless, uh, avid fan and um, and hope they're going to achieve some good success this year again. The uh, another question for you about uh, about uh, your your career with the police service. Uh, have uh, did you have any other family in the Toronto Police? Um, yes, I do. I, I, my daughter is um, uh, with the service, and uh, uh, I have two nephews as well that are, are with the service. That's awesome. Uh, we have we have a question about uh, your retiring. Uh, will, they want to know if you're going to come back again before you retire, if you're going to come back on TikTok again. Yeah, I guess, yeah, because my, my last working day is December 19th, and, and that's when we'll do the changeover, and, and Chief Designate Demke will take over. Um, and we're in really good hands, uh, an outstanding police officer, an outstanding selection, so... Uh, I look forward to that. Yeah, because and but apparently they'd like to see you on uh, one more time before you retire. Uh, oh yeah, no, here, so. uh, we are. Yeah, we are, we're only in October, so uh, yeah, there's yeah, some time. Yeah. There's yeah. some time, but uh, that's awesome that they, that they're already trying to schedule your next visit. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, oh, uh, so Akela's son uh, Kevin wants to know if both of us are cat or dog people. <laughs> um, I, I, I actually, I, I can do both, uh, a fan of both, quite frankly. My wife is allergic to cats, so I've never had one in the house since I've got married, but, uh, we've had multiple dogs and, and dogs with my kids as well. And we end up babysitting dogs. And so, uh, dogs have been a big part of our life. I, I'm allergic to cats, but I grew up with cats. I just had a lot of congestion and, uh, <laughs> but so at this point I'm, I'm petless, but I did have a dog for many years and I, I love animals. So, uh, thanks for that. Uh, someone j just, uh, said uh, rest in peace, constable Andrew Hong. Uh, that's uh, thank you. Uh, obviously we're, we're still, we're still adjusting to life without Andrew here. Uh, some questions about radar, uh, speed trap detectors. So we're talking about radar detectors. Uh, they want to know if they're illegal or not. And uh, they are illegal, yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's funny. It's one of those things that, uh, that many people don't know that not only are they illegal, but the Highway Traffic Act gives us search and seizure authority uh, based on the belief, if we believe that it's in the car. Uh, and uh, they're shocked when we, when we can go and, you know, search the vehicle for it and any person in it. So it's, it's an interesting conversation. What I'm actually uh, confused about or uh, shocked by is that some provinces do allow them. Yes. Yeah, but here not in not in Ontario. That's right. No, you can't you can't possess, sell, buy. Like it's it's they've really nailed it down. The only thing you can have is the if you manufacture them here as a, as a manufacturer, you can export them if they're transported in a sealed container out of province. 
uh, let's see here. People want to know if, oh, uh, what was it? It was, do you pull people over for tailgating? Yeah, following too close is a thing. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, the, there was a question about the diamond, diverging diamond interchange in Niagara. Have you had a chance to see that or, or uh, uh, that new design for uh, moving traffic on and off the highway? It's supposed to be very, uh, very, very efficient and it's supposed to reduce the, uh, the chances of collision uh, quite considerably. But many people want to know how, that, how that's working, but I've yet to go out and try it. No, no, neither have I. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with uh, the concept, but uh, I, ha I haven't actually seen it. Yeah, no, I, that's one of those things that I've got, I've got to go take a drive and check it out. But apparently it's, it's very easy to do once you, it, the, th the concept behind it is confusing. If you, when someone tries to describe about how you cross into opposing traffic sites, but on, pa on paper, it doesn't make sense in person. It does. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just, I want to make sure we got all this, the old Halloween coming up. Uh, are we doing anything to promote safety? Well, actually we do have a traffic campaign coming up and it starts actually on uh, the morning of, of Halloween, and it's about staying focused, stay alive. And, and so um, uh, we'll have officers focusing on that. The first week of the program is really going to be about uh, education. Um, and then the second week is, is going to be about enforcement. And, and that's what we try to do now. We try to put people, you know, give them a heads up that we're going to be paying attention to this. Uh, and then uh, we'll follow that with, with enforcement. Yeah, th these are all things we're, we're always trying to keep people safe. We're always trying to educate. And, and that's what, uh, what we do every day is trying to make sure that the, that the education part leads, uh, you know, before people start uh, getting the consequences. Because if they didn't know, here we, we're doing that, that, uh, that outreach to say you should have known. Uh, but here's the, here's the, uh, the scoop. And, uh, yeah, the, 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 the concept of enforcement is to change the bad behavior. No one, no one likes a ticket. And if they get a ticket, hopefully they change their behavior. Uh, they'd like to know. This is Amanda who would like to know. As a police officer, what was your favorite part of the job? Oh, <clears throat> well, you know what? The, <laughs> you know, policing is, is unique in some ways in the sense that, you know, you can come into policing and there's so many opportunities for so much, uh, su such variety of work staying within the, the, the same job. And that's something that, that, that I've always enjoyed. And I've had a number of, uh, I've had an opportunity to, to work across the organization uh, uh, in, in operational position and in management positions. And, and I've, I've, I've enjoyed every place I have because there's such good people everywhere you go that we're working that really have a genuine and sincere commitment to policing. But if you were to ask me, what was my favorite uh, working time or unit in the job it was when I worked in the homicide squad for five years I found that uh, very very satisfying and and occasionally and I've done it once uh, I went with my old partner out there a couple of years ago just went out for a homicide sometimes um, some of our members just have to get used to me being there but um, uh, and I plan to do that again before I retire but that was definitely my my favorite experience uh, during my career I'm, I'm uh, to go from the, a, a serious and good question. I, this was uh, a silly question, but I'll read it anyway. But will I get in trouble for driving with a monkey? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, occasionally, we get some great questions, uh, I, but I'll tell you, people do drive with their pets on their lap all the time, and that is illegal and unsafe for not only the driver for the distraction because it's a careless driving charge, but because they don't make very good windows. Uh, you know, it's hard to see through fluffy but that's, that's sitting on your lap sometimes if it's blocking the window. Well, and they, and they become a real problem. And, you know, I, I sort of liken that, Sean, to, you know, when you see people holding a child in their arms in the front seat and not being uh, in a, in a car, proper car seat. I mean, you know, when you, if you have to brake suddenly and, and significantly on impact, your arms are like noodles. And, and we've seen the results of what happens under that thing. And that's why, you know, we're, we're pretty stringent about uh, making sure that you have a proper child seat in the car uh, for, for the safety of the child, right? Things have changed. I mean, uh, years ago when I was a child, we didn't even have seat belts in the car. But now we know what is safe. And so the, why, that's why those things are in place. You know, we, we, we spend so much time trying to protect vulnerable road users. And sometimes those vulnerable road users are the passengers in your car. Uh, it, and and then people say, well, if it's if it's unsafe for a passenger to, or a child to be in a in a you know in a car without a car seat, well, how can we do it in a taxi? And how can we do it in a school bus? And how can we be on a transit? And uh, those are because we have to allow certain uh, essential uh, you know transportation opportunities. But uh, the the statistically, uh, it's 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 un well not just statistically, it's unsafe to be in a motor vehicle as a child. There's, there's so many risks. But uh, 
I, I don't know what else to say about it. Like, the, the people want to uh, do some really wild things. We, we had a video that was circulated on TikTok where someone was driving on the road with a child in a lap, playing with a steering wheel just last week. And uh, it was in Peel, so they, they uh, hopefully uh, were able to, to catch them. Uh, let's see here. How's your time going, by the way? I, we, no, I'm good. I got about another 10 minutes. Okay. I don't want to keep you longer than uh, we, we don't want to be greedy with your time. Uh, well, here's an interesting question. Uh, let's see here. Is that, well, we know the answer is it, it, this is, but is there a high demand for police constables? They may have just tuned in and missed the earlier uh, discussion about hiring. Yes, and, and we are. We're, we're doing a lot of hiring. I mean, the, uh, you know, policing is in demand across the province. It's it's even our capacity to go through the Ontario Police College. Uh, uh, as 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 every police officer in the province has to go through there to graduate. And and as I we we hope to be hiring in 2023, ideally uh, uh, 360 new officers. So uh, and that and in addition to that, special constables. Uh, right, and and so we're we're looking to try to grab you know some of the uh, younger people right out of high school, and and we want to start a program where we're gonna there is a requirement of being in that position. They're gonna have to continue to go to school. It's about lifelong learning, and uh, so we want to be able to grab some people that uh, want to be might be interested in policing. Start as a special constable for a number of years, and and then when uh, if they're interested and, and we deem them ready, then they we can so move them to a constable. Similar to how the cadet program used to work exactly nice i like that that's a uh, i i think that's a great idea uh, now uh here's a question about texting and driving if i should i call emergency police on person texting uh you know and that's uh, that's a, a vague question because it's, it's it's we're a broad a broad co uh, concept i mean if you saw someone who was all over the road they could be impaired and texting. It could be so many different things at work. And, and impairment can... I, I remember we saw a video, uh, again on TikTok, where someone was all over the road. Turns out they were texting, and it was believed that they were impaired. Yeah, and that we've seen a lot of that. I, I mean, I've witnessed it myself. You, you ask yourself, the person is either impaired or they're texting. It's so obvious when they're driving. I mean, it's, it's realistically, uh, you know, I, I think it is uh, worthy of... Um, uh, uh, an emergency call if it's if it's ongoing like that and that's significant uh, the reality is is the ability to actually intervene there can sometimes be difficult depending on the circumstances uh, but while we're on that topic um, you know one of the things that we're, we're where I think all services are dealing with and it's a significant is Toronto is the 911 uh, number being called unnecessarily and, and really, you want to call 911 when there is an emergency. Um, I, I mean, it's impacting our, our ability to answer the call, to meet the standards, because of the number of calls that we get that don't require 911 services are not an emergency. And you need to call the 911 or the non emergency line, or you need to call the city's 211 line for different services and not, not use 911. 911 must be used for purposes of emergencies. And when, and, when someone's uh, life is at risk, when, someone's, right. uh, when, when there's something happening right now. When it's being used improperly, it's starting to now impact our ability to handle the true emergency. I can't emphasize the importance of it. And, and, and just going back to, to texting, if it's texting, if, it's, oh, that, that's gonna, if, if the driving behavior is such that life is at risk right now, that's when it's, a, you know, the fact that they have a cell phone in their hand does not denote an emergency. It may be breaking the law, but if they're all over the road, that is an immediate risk to, to the public, to the people around you, including the, the person in that car. Uh, but, and it's important to make that, 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 that differentiation. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. There was a great question, and did it go away? Uh, sorry. Oh, here, this one is, is, is from Crystal. She says, I give you big props. Not a lot of police officers want to do social media, but it really seems like you care about your community and you care about your police officers. Hmm. And I assume they, uh, this is directed at, at you, Chief. Oh, thanks, Crystal. Uh, it, 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 always nice to get the feedback. Uh, there was, oh, maybe I already put it on screen and that's why. Yes, no, we covered that one already. So many questions. It's hard to, it's, and, I, and I apologize, not everyone who's asked a question uh, have I been able to, to uh, to respond to, uh, because there's just so many. And if you're just tuning in uh, and, and don't know who we are, my name is Sean Shapiro. I'm a police constable of the Toronto Police Service, and of course, next to me is Chief James Raymer, the Chief of the Toronto Police Service. Okay, I have how many officers are in command staff estimated? Well, command staff is is uh, we have four. We have. 
myself, of course, as the chief, and then four deputy chiefs of police, um, uh, which include uh, our, our deputy chief of administration, our deputy chief of uh, of uh, technology and innovation, and then we have our field command deputy and our specialized command deputy. Uh, and then we have seven chief superintendents that perform part of the senior management team. And so that's that's really what we refer to as the command. And, and that's not a lot considering how many members we have. That's correct. We have se about 7,400 members, and, and that's the, the senior management team. I mean, there's other senior officers in the organization, superintendents, inspectors, uh, civilian directors as well. But in terms of uniform, that's what we have. Now, uh, a question. Did you ever regret leaving the streets work to go work in an office? Um, not, I, I wouldn't say I regret. Sometimes you miss uh, some of the stuff that was happening. So when you move through the ranks as a senior officer, I, I, you know, as the intelligence commander or as the ETF commander, you know, you, you did get out on, on major operations and stuff, which was always uh, a lot of fun to be out and to actually see your people doing their job as well as they do. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, but not, not really missing it. It's, it's a different, um, it's a different type of work. Uh, it's a different role that you have. And um, sometimes, like I say, you miss some of the stuff, uh, you know, that the frontline officers are doing, but it, it's, it's a different role. And I wouldn't say I regret it. I think it's been almost like a, a, a natural evolution or transition. Awesome. Well, there's, there's a last question about, about your career, wanting to know, uh, did you ever work undercover? Yeah, uh, I, I, I did. Uh, not in a major way. I, I, I think when sometimes we think of undercover, we think of, you know, some, you know, uh, major work as, as on TV or, or some of our undercover officers in the drug squad. I did, and I, I worked in a major crime office in a plainclothes office, and we would do, we would pose as different people um, uh, rather than police officers. So it was more in a limited fashion. So not that yeah. deep cover uh, yeah, checking no, in. Yeah, no, everybody, everybody, everybody used to tell me I stuck out too much. So. <laughs> well, I, I, I never, I, I've always assumed that I would not be the ideal undercover officer. And, and since being on TikTok, I, I think that it's forever done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, me too. It, was just, it wasn't something that uh, uh, was, was for me. Well, I, I, I know you said you had about 10 minutes. I think we've spent about 10 minutes. It's a quarter to... Uh, uh, we can keep going, or if, if you've got... Uh, to well, let's, back do, let's do another question or two. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Uh, is security experience an asset to becoming a police officer? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, any, any uh, lived experience that you have um, uh, prior to coming into the police service is valuable. And don't ever think that it's not. Um, it's, 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 we're talking about maturity, uh, we're talking about uh, opportunities to, for compassion and empathy and some of the key characteristics we look in our people. And you can get that in, in so many uh, different aspects of life and, and uh, professions. And so any of that experience, life experience is valuable. So don't ever think that or uh, think that you need to exclude yourself from, uh, from applying if you have an interest in this work. Come and see us. We'll talk to you. In fact, we have uh, people in our HR. If you're truly interested, we'll help mentor you and 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 tell you, uh, give you some idea on some of the things you might have to work on if you have to meet a particular standard to get in. And the goal is to hire good applicants. So if that's, you're a good applicant, they're going to help you along the way and give you the best advice. Uh, that's, so. that's the most important thing. We we want we want good people, and and um, uh, you know any of that that uh, experience that you gain in life is 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 valuable. The, uh, the, the website, again, for our employment uh, information is www.tps.ca forward slash careers. And there's all sorts of great information there, anything you want to know. And, of course, the contact information to get in touch with a recruiter who can then help you further. Uh, there's a question about implementing the polygraph test. Uh, other, I think Ontario is the only province that doesn't have a polygraph for hiring. Uh, so they'd like to know if, if we're going to add that. Uh, we have uh, not uh, currently have any intention of adding the polygraph. Uh, as you said, we, we don't generally do it here in Ontario, although some of our federal partners do. Um, but uh, we, we have not uh, made a decision on that. It's interesting. You know, it's, it's, it's such a, um, a, a, a polarizing topic for, for many. Uh, and, but it's, it's, we do have a polygraph unit that, that, that does that, that kind of work. So uh, interesting police stuff. I see they just have that question there, Sean, about do you have to have police foundations to apply? And the answer is no. Uh, as I said earlier, any type of life experience is valuable. So 
the, the absolute minimum right now is, is a high school education. Uh, we'd like to see some second, uh, uh, the next level um, education as well, uh, but it's, it's not absolutely essential. Okay. Um, well, this is someone who's making silly statements. Mm. <laughs> I can remove that. Uh, did you struggle with anything in police training? Uh, is a question from Morgan. Uh, I, I, for me, it was always the, the run. As a big guy, the shuttle run was never fun. Uh, but I got it. I did it. Yeah. You know, I worked hard. Uh, but uh, I don't, there was no topic that I had a hard time with. I, uh, but no, I mean, I, 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 there was nothing I, I really struggled with. I mean, having said that, it was a lot of work. And I, I think if you generally, if you, you put the work in, uh, you're, you're going to do fine. And, and uh, uh, for whatever reason, I, I was fortunate enough not to... To, to really struggle with anything, so. Okay, I think, do you offer inter internships for university students? Um, there, there's, there's the odd program that, that uh, we will bring somebody in for. Uh, one of the internships that we do is actually our Yippie program, which is our Youth and in Policing Initiative. And, uh, but that's, that, that's for a, a younger cadre of, of staff, and it, it's a terrific program that we've had in place for, uh, you know, close to 20 years now. And, um, but we, we do the occasional thing if there's a specific, um, uh, you know, um, um, item that, or area that we might get somebody involved in for a program, but it's not a standard program for us in, in a broad way across the organization, it's not. And we've had some, some students that are yippies, or were yippies, that are police officers now. They've, they've actually come back. That's there. correct, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's that's, amazing. That's a great program, too. It gives us great exposure. And, and we're going to have officers, as I said earlier, going out to some of the schools and talking to youth to try to encourage some people to consider policing after high school. And, uh, and like I say, you'll, you'll, be, you'll have to continue you'll, uh, your education as, 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 while you work with us at the service. Josh wants to know, is this the TPS police chief? Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, the one and only. Uh, the, uh, it, it, you, you don't have, you, they, they don't have the benefit of, of, of seeing your, uh, your name on, uh, as they do on YouTube. Uh, which we're announcing, you know, it, it says right on the screen. But yes, Chief James Raymer, I'm Sean Shapiro from the Toronto Police Service. I work in traffic, and this is Ask a Traffic Cop. Uh, what is this? Can we... Uh, no, that, that we're not doing. <laughs> uh, okay. Some of the, some, some, if you're going to ask questions only one at a time, and I don't say one at a time, only one time, because I've been scrolling through some duplicates uh, that we've already covered, but I can't delete them just yet. Uh, what's up? No, we can't go there. Uh, they want to know products that we recommend. We don't. We don't endorse products. Uh, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, well, uh, my 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 free time in this current position, frankly, is quite <laughs> limited. <laughs> um, uh, I, I I do like to to read uh, something other than. Uh, police-related material uh, when I get some time to relax and, and uh, sort of re-energize a little bit. But uh, and I and I, uh, as I said earlier with my favorite team, I I enjoy getting out to a Leafs game, uh, watching sports. Loved watching the Blue Jays. I guess with everybody else in the city, massive disappointment <laughs> after their loss in the playoffs there. But um, yeah, it's just an opportunity to re relax with uh, friends and family, and you know have dinners together, and and that's what I enjoy. Here's here's a question that talks about the succession plan. Like how do how do they choose a chief? So the question was from Keith. Uh, you said you're retiring. How is your successor chosen? Well, it, it's um, really it's our job as as command officers to actually ensure that we are creating a succession plan within the organization and identifying people and giving them opportunities and giving them the requisite training and ch opportunities to move across the organization to gain the experience they have so they can compete for that position. And then, of course, the, the board who has the responsibility of appointing the chief will then do a, a uh, you know, a cross-country um, um, hiring process uh, and and um, with and they they hire a professional company in to sort of oversee that program. They bring in community people uh, to be involved in that process, as they did with our, our current process. 
and and then they go through interviews and screening of resumes and and then a smaller number of interviews and and then uh, after some in-depth research and analysis and and interviews they they make a selection and uh, and so that's uh, how Chief Designate Dempy was uh, selected, and, and he has a broad range of experience across the organization, um, and uh, was a, was a terrific selection. A, a couple of questions just came in. Uh, one from Big Jeff Fresh, who says, "Does the chief ever tune into this show on his own time while doing paperwork or other things?" <laughs> you know what? I'm not a big streamer, but I have to tell you, since I got on the program, <laughs> I guess uh, the four the iterations four four times before, I actually have tuned in a couple of times, and it's interesting um, how much it's been picked up by even the mainstream media. Uh, and you know, I know at 1010 they talk about you a lot as well too. So you know, as I said early, very very valuable. Um, and you're doing a great job, Sean. Thanks very much. Really happy to be a part of it. And I just want to thank everybody for their questions, but I'm, I'm going to have to move on today. It, we, we, this is actually, we, we had you for almost an hour. It's amazing. <laughs> thank you very much for spending time with us and our, uh, you know, us being everyone, the viewers and myself. I uh, really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks so much, Sean. And everybody have a great day. Take we'll care. see you soon. Okay. Take care. Okay. Now it's just you and me. Give me one second. I will change the look and graphics so that it's, uh, uh, and then, you know, some of the stuff and the reason why so many of the questions uh, were, were questions that uh, didn't get addressed is because, uh, you know, they're very specifically traffic questions and that's very specifically my bag. Um, when, you know, and asking the chief to, to talk about some of the traffic stuff, it wouldn't be fair to him. Okay, let me just adjust that. Boy, this is, I, I tried to, to make the camera go as far away from me as possible uh, because usually it's, it's this, right? And uh, you gotta fit two people on camera, so you got half my nose. Anyway, uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for spending time. Thanks for interacting. It's, it's so nice to, that, uh, uh, to, to be able to get the chief into uh, the studio and spend time with us because, like I said, he's a busy guy. He runs the show. And, uh, you know, he, I don't think, I, I think when he said, you know, a couple of briefings, a couple of things, I think he was being very modest as to just how much he was doing. Um, sorry, just one second. There was some paperwork left behind. Uh, we'll, send it, we'll send it to him. We have internal mail. It's amazing. Somebody asked, how tall am I? I'm six foot five. That is how tall I am. All right, let me switch back to this. All right. Uh, and of course, Kyle was asking. Uh, sorry, Kyle, we missed your question and the chief is gone, but uh, you want to know what the, if there was one specific event in your policing career that has informed or changed the way you do your job today. A fantastic question, and I apologize that we didn't get to ask. But you know what you can do? Because we know the chief is coming back. On our volley space, that's a community space, 120 roughly people in it. Uh, if you go to our link tree in the bio, if you go to trafficcop.ca, it goes directly to my link tree. You can go to Volley. Uh, it's a free app. Uh, you can actually get to it through your web browser if you don't want to download an app. And what it is, is a way for you to ask questions by way of video, voice, or text. It's an awesome way uh, to connect. So uh, we, we didn't have any video or voice stuff because I would have played it on the air. Now, we're still here for a little bit. Uh, I like to, whenever I have a guest, go about a half an hour extra to make sure that, you know, questions that you didn't get answered, get answered. Let's see here. Can transports drive in the left lane on 400 highways? Most highways, and 400 included, uh, will have signs that specifically d uh, direct traffic or, or designate use of lanes. So my understanding on 400 series highways is that the left lane has a sign that says no uh, no trucks allowed. So uh, if there's no sign present, there is uh, there's nothing preventing them from being there. Okay. Do you use a breathalyzer to detect marijuana? We do have a unit. It's not a breathalyzer. It is a, a it uses a buccal swab, and I'm not being trained on it, so I'm not going to tell you how it works because I don't know exactly how it works. Uh, but it, my understanding is they you swab the mouth, the inside of the mouth, and from that it uh, determines co uh, a content or a, uh, a, a some reading, whether it be pass fail or a, or a number. I don't know. Uh, but save and accept. Like, like, that's great for for measuring a, in a, a number. Really, if you uh, see someone who is impaired 
we can do a roadside screening device, uh, sorry, a roadside uh, sobriety test, you know, that thing you see in the movies, but, you know, walk a straight line, heel toe, heel toe, that sort of thing. We're trained on how to do that. Uh, alternatively, uh, the next step would be, or, or, or actually the next progression would be something called a drug recognition expert. And that is, uh, you know, bringing them before a, a specially trained police officer uh, who is determined, considered an expert based on their, their training and qualifications. And they have you perform or a subject perform a battery of tests. That battery of tests uh, will, based on the, the, the performance, I don't know what the best terminology is, uh, you would be, they would determine what category of drug you're on and their findings would uh, be the same as, as, you know, blowing over essentially in an impaired case. Because you would, you would see a suspension and all the stuff that goes with it. Okay. Okay, King says, people drive way over the speed limit on highway. Is Toronto police planning to install any speed cameras on highways? How is Toronto police planning to stop the reckless driver? Thank you. I love that question because I, for one, would advocate personally for cameras on the highway because I do agree with you. There's people going way too fast, like way too fast. And uh, how do we stop that? Well, the only way to stop it is to educate. And if education doesn't work, is to enforce because that's the options we have. You know, we don't have a remote control to change your, your maximum speed, which it is interesting. If the technology came out, I'd, I'd probably go for that too. I don't think there's any plan, and it wouldn't be a Toronto police plan. It would be a city plan for the city highways. So Don Valley Parkway and the Fred Gardner Expressway are both Toronto city highways. They are not uh, 400 series provincial highways. That's the only stuff we would we would be monitoring. Uh, the Ontario Provincial Police might not monitor and, and police the 400 series highways, and that would be a provincial uh, situation. But currently, there's no... There's no law. Uh, I, I don't think. I don't think the jurisdiction for the traffic cameras would extend to. That. It's all school zone related right now. Okay, what else we got? Q and A. Um, someone says police officers not stopping at stop signs. Well, that's illegal because we're not exempt from stop signs. We must stop. In fact, to go through a red light, we must. Ooh, I think I just. Uh, I get shocked. I'm wearing a pin. Uh, yeah, that was shocking. I got, a, I got shocked through my Andrew Hong memorial pin. Uh, in any case, police officers not stopping at stop signs is illegal. If you were to go through a red light, a, a, a signalized intersection displaying a red light, well, we have to come to a complete stop and activate our full emergency equipment to go through it, and then we can turn it off again. But there's no exemption for stop signs. So if police officers are breaking the law going through stop signs, uh, they could be fined uh, internally. They could be charged under the Highway Traffic Act, but I think that the uh, the fine would be more uh, in terms of loss of hours. The first time you'd lose four hours, second time eight hours, and 16 hours. That's going to be even more expensive than the uh, uh, HTA offense. And, and the reason I say it's going to happen is I know people who have done it unintentionally while going to a 911 call, adrenaline's pumping, and they went through a stop sign, was caught on our in-car camera, and the camera was reviewed, and when it was reviewed, the supervisor said, you did wrong, here you go, you're being you're being in, uh, you know, charged uh, or disciplined. It does happen. Do you chase motorcycles? There is no blanket vehicle that is exempt from chase. Any vehicle, any situation could result in a police chase. If someone fails to stop for police and there is reason to pursue them, a pursuit might take place. Now, we take into consideration always public safety. That's the, the highest priority. So if somebody, uh, you know, stole a chocolate bar and then ran away, uh, are we going to chase them on a, on a, on a, on a, on a go ahead and a high speed chase over 99 cents? Probably not. Probably we'll 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 have more enough information on them. Uh, we'll just meet them at their house later. But uh, yeah, we're not putting the, the public at, at risk for something like that. So it depends. If it's a murder suspect, if there's a person who uh, you know is armed and dangerous, there's different uh, reasons to pursue, and uh, every situation is different. Uh, oh, this is a good question. Turn right from both right turn lanes on a red. I grew up thinking it was illegal. I was wrong. I was wrong. Uh, let's see here. The, the deal is that you can turn right from both right turn lanes, but you must turn into the appropriate lane and you must do so safely after coming to a complete stop. So many people don't realize you have to stop for a red light when you're turning right on a red. I don't understand how long they got their license if they don't understand that, but many people, I know that's not the question you were asking about, but my goodness. Uh, what is this question here? I don't understand what this question is. Flowers and cakes? I don't understand. Okay. What do we got here? I need water is what I need. Q 
Can you go left on a red if one way to one way? Yes, you can. Uh, if you are at if you are traveling on a one way street and you approach another one way street, you can make a left turn on a red, presuming there's no sign preventing it or, or uh, restricting that uh, that turn. Then yeah, you could. You could, you could. It's rare, though. It's not one ways. At least in Toronto, are not as common. I was in Ottawa last week. Holy moly, one way city, literally one way everywhere. Took me. I thank thank goodness for GPS because I would have been lost six ways from Sunday. Uh, how can you get a job in the breathalyzer unit? So to become a breath technician, if you're a traffic officer, uh, there's usually two paths for careers. You, you either go breath tech or you go reconstruction officer. So uh, my plan was to become a breath tech uh, just because recon wasn't something I was, I was as, as interested in. Uh, and then I became a motor squad officer. And then I've been here, which is completely not at all what I ever planned on. But uh, both are, are, are very rewarding. Um, one of them, well, there's also a position in, in terms of the breathalyzer unit to be the breath coordinator. That's one person or two people, one and a half people, not two people. Let's see here. Can we citizen arrest a police officer for speeding? Uh, well, no. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, speeding is something that police officers are exempt for. We are we are exempt. We are permitted to exceed the speed limit in the lawful execution of our duties, and citizens' arrests don't apply to to uh, the provincial acts. Which is, uh, a citizens' arrest must be a, a a situation of indictable offense. Indictable. What's indictable? Well, it's something that is a criminal code. B, a big one. Murder, for instance, indictable. You know. Um, that the, I'm not going to get into a whole lesson of all the intricacies of citizens' arrest, but no, you can't charge, you cannot citizens' arrest. I, I do appreciate the question, though. Uh, let's see here. And should we report a police officer for speeding? You may if you wish. However, I can tell you that the Highway Traffic Act exempts police officers in the lawful execution of their duties from exceeding the speed limit. We have to exceed the speed limit to do so much of what we do especially when you consider the fact that so many people are speeding on the highway just to be able to get in front of them. Uh, we must be able to uh, exceed the speed limit. Yeah. Uh, oh, Amanda has silly questions. Someone wants to know how many times I pulled my gun and then tries to make it a racist question, but or at least tries to get a, a racism thing going. I, I, I've never had to pull my firearm ever except for clearing a building like a dozen times with nobody there. It was an empty building. That was it. I've not had to pull my firearm in the course of my duties uh, at all, ever. Other than for training and, you know, never on work. And, and I'm glad. I'm glad. You know, people have been fantastic. Even the people that I've arrested have been good. You know, they broke the law. But when it came time to... to, to owning up for their mistake or, or dealing with police, they were good. Very few people, uh, you know, where I had to actually get physical. And, you know, no one, no one wants to get hurt and no one wants to hurt anybody else, at least nobody that I know. Uh, Jace wants to know if I still carry a firearm. I do not. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Jace, I, sorry, I, I didn't see that, she, that you're congratulating the chief on his retirement. But you know what? He's going to come back again, so you'll be able to ask it later. But, uh, oh, were you asking me about the firearm or him? No, we didn't get, and I'll, I'll save that, uh, that question about modified cars for the chief for another day. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? Theoretically, how illegal is a dirt bike on roads? Well, not theoretically. Actually, it's totally illegal. Uh, those are not those. Those uh, off-road vehicles are prohibited from being operated on the highway, uh, which is any road in Ontario. Cannot be done. Oh, Chase was asking me at the firearm. I love it. I'm getting it on my watch. My Q. I'm getting all these updates from every. I've got so many screens. Okay. Uh, the safe way to put a seatbelt on when pregnant. I don't know. Uh, I would suggest consulting with your physician. 
Uh, I know that, uh, and, I, and I can't endorse it, but uh, I know that many women while pregnant uh, will get an exemption not to wear a seatbelt, which I, I don't know how that's safer than wearing a seatbelt, but I don't know what the right way it is, so please consult your doctor. That would be my suggestion. Uh, what do we got here? How often do you deal with persons under the influence? When I was on the road, it was fairly uh, frequent. I, I, I had some weeks where I got someone, arrested someone daily for impaired operation, daily. Uh, so I, I, had, I had twice in one night uh, at, at times. So impaired operation, and I can't speak to you know, current events because I haven't been on the road for some time. I had a crash in 2018 and I haven't been back on the road since. But uh, before, prior to that, it was a lot. Um, oh, <laughs> radar flashed me turning right on a red. What to do? Chances are you didn't come to a stop prior to making your red, uh, your right on red, which means you ran the red light and you get a ticket. Tickets for everybody. If you don't stop for a red light, you are eligible. What do we got here? What do we got? Hey, uh, you know, we do this every day. And if you don't already follow us, please do, uh, because we'd love to have you as part of the fam. Uh, you get notified whenever we go live. And normally it's from 10 to 11. Of course, today it's from 9 to 10-ish. And the reason being is we had a special guest. And if you missed the chief, I'm sorry. You can, however, go back and watch it. It'll be available on YouTube on our channel, which is Traffic Services Toronto Police. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's so cool to, to have the chief drop by. Uh, and, and, and really uh, a, 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 an endorsement on the fact that he appreciates what we're doing on, on social media. That we're doing this kind of outreach. Education. It's all about the education. Uh, what do we have here? Can you get a ticket for going in between the oversized load truck and the oversized load pilot escort pickup truck? Pick truck? Um, chances are that's going to be, or, or you could get into a careless or unsafe move or follow too close because they don't usually hang back uh, very far from my experience. But, you know, I don't know if there's a specific charge for it, though. I don't think there is. Uh, what do we got this? Can I call the police if someone spits on my car? Yeah, you could. Um, is it worthy of a 911 call? No. I'd sooner make a, a complaint online to, uh, to document the situation. Uh, the problem is that chances are that's somebody who's got some mental health issues uh, and leaves the scene before police come. So, you know, you, they haven't damaged anything, um, and staying, staying by probably isn't a good idea. Um, but you can make a report of that kind of behavior, give a description. Maybe it's someone who's in need of, of help. You know, maybe they need some uh, some some intervention, and, and maybe there's services that can be provided, uh, or maybe they're aggressive. Uh, you know what's, and uh, that's going to be the the precursor to a more assaultive interaction. So, not engaging is the first step there. Don't don't escalate. Uh, from BC, do I remove radar detectors while I'm in Ontario? Yeah, yeah. You uh, you shouldn't be bringing it in the province. Technically, you're not exempt. So, uh, but my suggestion would be because I'm not expecting you to leave it at the side of the road, uh, is if you were going to be traveling through Ontario, ensure that you do not use it. Put it in your trunk if you're going to put it anywhere because we're obviously not going to know you have it if you're not using it. If you use it, however, we likely will. And uh, But we're not randomly stopping cars searching for radar de detectors. So, yeah, that's a thing. Or not a thing in that particular case. Uh, I don't know what a Drake Lane permit is. <laughs> Is there, did he do something again? There was that, that one video from 2017, which was, a, you know, just a, um, an unfortunate video. But, yeah, uh, if there's something that Drake has done recently, please let me know. I'm always curious. Not, not that curious. Uh, do you find yourself overworked when seven days, 16 hours? When I was on shift work, when I was doing 16-hour days because of arrests made, yeah, I was tired. I'm tired now. I work an eight-hour day and I'm tired because, you know, I get up at four in the morning. I get here for six. I leave here by two, three, sometimes four, depending on what my workload is like. And then I drive for an hour to an hour and a half So, uh, because traffic is a thing. So, yeah. Am I overworked? I make work. I really do. Uh, and then I go home and I, while I'm working, I'm social mediaing, you know, in between dinner and other things because I want to keep the connection. I want to keep talking to y'all and, and answer your questions. And I do my best to, 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 I'm trying to have a better work-life balance by not being online all the time. But uh, you know what? I, I, if, if I don't answer it now, I either don't answer it ever or I try and answer it. It just stacks up. So there you go. Why 
is that radar detectors are illegal in Ontario, whether they're, or sorry, I'm assuming you mean when they're legal in Alberta and BC. Why do we have radar? Why do we do enforcement? We do it because we're trying to catch people doing the wrong thing. We catch them doing the wrong thing so they can be issued a ticket so we can document the fact that they're not being a good driver, uh, that they're being dangerous and, and uh, risking the lives of others, and that they get a really nasty feeling from having to pay 200 bucks for their ticket, and then they either have an insurance hike, because that's good, we want you to get an insurance hike because you're going to cost people money by sh by adding risk uh, to you know life and safety of others. Uh, we want you to lose your license when you accumulate too many points. We we want to catch you if you're breaking the law. We don't want to warn you that we're there so you can slow down temporarily, get past us, and then speed up again. That's a useless thing. And and I, I really disagree with provinces that choose to allow. The, the devices to be used because they're shortchanging themselves. They're they're getting people to pretend they're following the law only when you're watching and then go back to breaking the law. And that's just not serving the, the needs of the public, in my opinion. So, of course, that is my opinion. Uh, I would very much like to see uh, a crackdown on, uh, on speed, whether it be electronic or just a, a lot more traffic officers. But that's just me. I want people to slow down because I want to protect life. You know, yours. Uh, Ashton Stein, hello. We're wishing you the best, my favorite officer. Why, thank you very much, my friend. Is, uh, are you still my favorite Manitoban? Have you moved? I, I vaguely remember you moving somewhere. Let me know. Inquiring minds need to know. Okay. What if a person with a learner's permit is driving alone? That is your G1 driver who is required to be supervised by a fully qualified G-Class driver. That's someone who has four years experience. The experience clock starts at G2, but they have to have four years total experience. In fact, they should have the four vertical dots to the left of their mini-me picture, which is in the bottom right-hand corner of their driver's license. If you don't have someone who's qualified to supervise you, you are a G1 driving unaccompanied. You are eligible for a $110 ticket for that offense. You are additionally going to get a 30-day suspension for your first conviction, a 90-day suspension for your second, and on your third, you will be kicked out of the licensing program, which means you have to start at ground zero. What does that really mean? Well, if you, you have to have eight or 10 to is it 10. I haven't talked about this in so long. I've forgotten. I think it's 10 months if you are, it's either eight or 10. Oh my God. I can't remember. I think you had two months off. So I think it's 10 months if you uh, have a learner, if you have a uh, uh, approved driving school, uh, or it's 12 months if you don't. Yeah, I have to go look that up and confirm. But uh, it's either eight or, tw or 10 months. You get a discount in time uh, for having proper qualifications. But in any case, if you were at, like, call it eight months, and then you got three convictions. You'd be kicked out, start again, reapply, start at zero experience. If you get into a collision, you have no insurance as a, you know, the, 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 the car might have insurance, but you don't have insurance. You, they will likely deny any claim. You're an unlicensed driver. You caused that collision. Now, what happens if uh, uh, someone lent you that car? They, they, they let you drive that car. Permission, here's the keys, go have at her. Well, that is going to get them a ticket under the Highway Traffic Act for uh, putting someone in a position to violate their condition. Yeah, you, they made it possible. If you took the car without consent, it's guess what? Take vehicle without consent, criminal code. Now you're, you basically stole the car. Well, if you stole the car, it's different than if you take it without consent. See, one is where it's mom, dad's car or something like that, and you, bor you, you borrowed without permission the keys as opposed to like actually like hot wiring it. Okay. Uh, wah, 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 wah. What do we have here? Should tow trucks turn on their distracting light? Oh, turn off their distracting light. If they're not towing, um, it would be great if they turned it off. They have to have it on when they're towing. That's a requirement. So, no, they shouldn't turn it off while they're towing. Oh, American here, can you explain how Canada's driver's licenses work? It is different in every province, just to add to the confusion, uh, as it would be different in every state in the United States. So in Ontario, you apply at 16 years old or later uh, for a learner's permit. That learner's permit is called a G1. It, is, uh, it starts a five-year learning process. Uh, while you have a G1, you can drive 
uh, only between the hours of 5 a.m. and midnight, uh, only with or and, and only when you're being directly supervised by a fully licensed G-Class holding uh, driver who's sitting in the front passenger seat. In fact, that it can be the only person in the front seats of the vehicle. If you had a pickup truck, you could not have a passenger between you. That's one. Uh, when you finish, I can't, that's bugging me now that I can't remember if it's eight or 12, 10 months, but if you finish the prescribed year without training or the, the discounted year with approved training, then you can apply and test for a G2, which is basically a conditional or pro a probationary license. Now you can drive alone, uh, but you can, uh, you, you can only hold uh, a zero, zero alcohol for any learner or not novice driver. Uh, and then you can drive alone on any highway, but you can't have between 12 and 5 a.m. a certain number of people under the age of 20 in your vehicle that aren't family. Uh, so you can't be the designated driver to the nightclubs uh, because you're probably not going to be able to transport anybody, well, if they're under the age of 20. Uh, and that's a thing. And then when you finally do that for a year, you're eligible to write the G and, and do the road test for a G class license called a G two exit, and that is how it works. Now, there's different classes of license for different types of vehicles. Uh, the G class is, is your general, I guess, uh, uh, general license for automobiles and light trucks. Okay. Do you have a chief at the station? I had the chief at the station. The chief was here uh, up until about. 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes ago, and, and which is actually, I think, our new record, the longest he spent on air with us, which is awesome. We don't have a chief at the station, though, like a, a station chief. What we have is a superintendent, or in our case, an acting superintendent, uh, who is, uh, you know, in charge of the officer, in charge of the station. Uh, okay, Sebastian, I've read your question. We're not going there. <laughs> Okay. We already talked about spitting on cars. Is there a rule about having two hands on the wheel? Well, it's the best way to go, uh, but it's not against the law to take a hand off the wheel. If you have no hands on the wheel, that's careless driving. And that's a thing we see on occasion. Dirt bikes, we talked about dirt bikes. Do police officers pull over semis for inspection? Yes, police officers have the authority to inspect any vehicle. Now, we have specially trained officers who are capable and uh, have completed training for uh, commercial vehicle inspection, which is, I mean, technically I have the authority to pull them over and have a look. I don't know what the heck I'd be looking for other than gross defect. But uh, we do have, uh, we have many officers who actually used to be mechanics. They have their mechanics uh, ticket and uh, others that are just qualified for commercial vehicle inspection. So we do do that. We have a team. Uh, what do we have here? Do we have to roll the window all the way down in traffic? Maybe you mean in a traffic stop? We have to be able to communicate. If you're opening it up this much, it's pretty, no, that's not cool. We have to be able to communicate. Uh, do children slash babies count as people in the HOV lane? Last time I checked, peoples are babies and babies are people. And yes, they do qualify. Uh, this concept that it's only for people who are gainfully employed, no, that's not accurate. What does this do? Still need to bike on the road if child in back seat? Yes, yes, you do. Um, I think I understand. So, you know, in Toronto and every, every city and municipality is going to have their own bylaws. You cannot ride on a sidewalk unless you are under the age of 14. You are the rider. And just because you have a passenger who is under 14 does not qualify you for access to the sidewalk. But in Toronto, you have many, many bike lanes. Bicycle lanes are good. Actually a big fan of that. Except when I'm driving and then they're, they're, they're like every other driver, like, ah, I wish I had another lane, but, but I am very appreciative of the fact that we're protecting vulnerable road users. And it doesn't matter if you ride, walk, or drive, we want to make sure that everyone gets home safe each and every day. Is the left lane in a city a passing lane by law? Well, there's no passing lane by law anywhere. It's a concept where you, you stay right unless you're passing. Now, on a city street, especially in Toronto, no one's going the speed limit. No one's going faster than anyone else. You're all in gridlock all the time. So uh, the, the concept of saying you can only be in that lane for passing is ridiculous. And the truth is most people who want to pass are also speeding. You know that thing where they do that's illegal? Yeah, 
they do that. Uh, I have no sympathy for people who are speeding and upset that people are in their way. If you're speeding, slow the heck down. If you run from the cops, what do you get charged for? It depends. Uh, you know, fail to stop police, uh, you know, uh, escape lawful custody. We need to know more about what, in what context the running from police is, uh, is occurring. Uh, what is this? So theoretically, I think we talked about this earlier. Actually, we did. Theoretically, how illegal is riding a dirt bike on the roads? One of the things that's illegal about it is it's driving an uninsured motor vehicle on the road, which comes with five to twenty-five thousand dollars in fines. In addition to, well, it's it's possible. It's not it's not an always thing, but you can also be uh, sentenced up to six months in jail. Uh, can I lose my license for riding a, a dirt bike on the road? Uh, uninsured? Uh, I don't know, but there's. I don't think there's points. So it's not a suspendable thing that I'm aware of. I have to look into that to see if you, if you lose your license for riding the dirt bike on the road. Sorry for the shaky camera as I type, tap on it. It's very far away, so it's, it's, I'm, I'm less uh, gentle on it. Let's, let me, what do I have here? Oh, Q&A. See, I was in the Chiefs folder, and I was not looking uh, for the regular Q&A. So thank you for the heads up. Uh, what is Volley? Why are people saying read Volley? Well, Volley is a, uh, a community space that we have. It's free. You're welcome to join us. You can get the link by going to our bio into the link tree or go to trafficcop.ca. And uh, it's, a, it's a place where you can send video, voice, or text messages. And you can send attachments, all sorts of cool stuff. But that's what they're sending their messages. So Joseph says, hey, Sean or Chief, if I buy an electric scooter capable of doing 200 kilometers an hour, could I modify it to the necessary modifications on it and register as a motorcycle, or would you guys or gals in police still classify it as unroadworthy? Yes and no, or is it no and yes? In any case, yeah, a, a, a scooter. Now, are you talking about an e-bike, or like a, or which is actually going to be a motorcycle? Or do you mean like a stand-up scooter? Because I've seen machines that go that fast on YouTube, I think. Let's assume it's a motorcycle or a bicycle contraption scooter. No, you cannot. Uh, that would not be roadworthy. It would have to be licensed as a motorcycle. It would have to be um, approved by Transport Canada. It would have to be issued a VIN number. And once it had a VIN number, you could license it as a motorcycle on the road. If it did not meet their qualifications for safety to be on the road, then it would not meet also the qualifications uh, as an e-bike because you've said it's capable of doing 200 miles per, miles per hour, kilometers per hour. Um, it would have a motor that's more than 500 watts. It would be over 120 kilos probably. Uh, in any case, it would not meet their qualifications for e-bike. So it would be a no-no situation, private property only, uh, racetrack, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, Jay says, I didn't realize that that's an Andrew Hong pin. That's awesome. Yeah, in, in fact, if you want to see it or if you want to buy one, you can go to uh, hm19.company.site, hm19.company.site, and that will take you to the web store. Uh, they're still available. Uh, okay, what is this? Jay just wants to know if, he, if, he, if I think that I'll be doing this for the rest of my career as an officer, or do you think you'll change departments? So I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Uh, I'm, I'm a traffic guy through and through. I've always wanted to be in traffic. I wanted to be a motor officer. I got to do that. I'd love to do that again, quite frankly. I miss being on the bikes. I miss being outside in the, in the, you know, where trees and air and sunshine happens. But I do enjoy what I'm doing. Um, I, I don't have any immediate plans. I, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing until, you know, something changes. So, but I... I I wouldn't be against being on the road. And maybe you could do like, like TikTok while parked at the side of the road. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Uh, radar is legal in Saskatchewan. However, my Saskatchewan safety rating with demerits will cost me $800 on top of the fine. So no thanks. I'm okay without a ticket. What do you mean? Is that, oh, yeah, I don't understand. Are you saying that you lose your safety rating? You have to tell me more about that. I don't understand the Saskatchewanian thing. What, what, what is, yeah, I don't even know how to say Saskatchewan. Is Saskatchewanian a Saskatchewan? I don't know how to. All right. Uh, can a 14-year-old with an Alberta license drive in Ontario if he's supervised by a fully licensed driver? No. No. Uh, you can't. You have to be 16 years or, or older to drive in Ontario regardless of what the laws are in your province. Uh, what is this? 
how much does your impounded car cost to remove? So if you get a stunt driving charge, your vehicle's impounded, how much does it cost to get it out of Huck? Um, it depends on how long it's been in stored. I think the average number is about $1,500, roughly. But I don't know. Depends on the, where it's impounded. It depends if it's in the city where this, the regulations are outside the city where there's less or fewer regulations. Uh, do, do, do. What do we have here? How many beers can I drive? Bef- sorry, how many beers can I have before I can drive? Uh, none. Don't 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 drink alcohol and drive. Impaired operation is a thing, and, and impairment occurs as, as, as early as one drink. Uh, the, the truth is that alcohol being involved in your system when you're a driver dramatically increases your chances of, of collision. And that means it dramatically increases your chance of hurting yourself or somebody else. Now, there's legal limits and, and when you're going to get a suspension and when you're going to get uh, charged with a breath uh, demand and, or a breath result. Uh, but you, you could be impaired and uh, arrested for impaired operation with less than the legal limit because everybody deals with alcohol differently and there's no blanket statement of saying one beer an hour is okay it's not it doesn't work uh if i have a glass of wine i want to go to sleep not drive Uh, how can you prove a person is using a radar detector well we have to develop the suspicion the belief that you have a radar detector, at which point we can stop your vehicle and we can search your vehicle and the persons inside the vehicle because that authority is provided under the Highway Traffic Act. Now, when we find the item and we can disassemble your car to do it, uh, whether it be a jammer or a, or a radar detector, uh, we can seize it and then charge you. It's a $170 fine and two demerit points. Now, I say I can disassemble your vehicle. I can. And then I can let you put it back together because I don't have to put it back together. I just get the, to search it for finding the part. So... What happens? 99.99% of the time, the individual that we suspect has the device, hands it over because they want their nice car to remain nice. And it makes it really easy. But we do search vehicles. We do find things. (sighs) Is driving underneath a semi-truck in a lowered sports car considered stunt driving? I've seen videos of that on TikTok. It's insane. It is insane. I, I would say that's stunt driving. I would say that's dangerous driving criminally at a restroom. Yeah. I think I'd forego the stunt and just, just go to dangerous driving. That is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, how do we know what our alcohol breath level is? Uh, this is why I, I, just not drinking and driving is better because you don't know. We will know once we test you, and that's already too late. Uh, right? You, you, then there's devices you can buy, uh, but they're not necessarily going to be accurate. Truth is, if you're going to drink, if you're going to consume drugs if, uh, or be impaired by anything, don't drive. Make the smart decision. Take a taxi. Pick, call a company to pick up your car. Uh, it's going to be much less than the fifteen to $30,000 that you are going to spend when we arrest you. Or you hurt somebody, and then we arrest you. Uh... Teen is ASD, can he bike on a sidewalk, need letter? I don't know. Uh, I'm not aware of any exemption other than the age, under 14. What kind of car do you drive on duty and off duty? Uh, I have a minivan at work. That's my, well, It's whatever vehicle. I, I'm, I can take any motor vehicle that's here uh, in, in our fleet. But... Uh, Uh, What I drive off duty is full size because I am full size and I want to be comfortable. I I, I thought about a Prius and then I laughed. Uh, And I I, I actually wish I could own a a Prius or something that is, you know, less expensive to operate. But I I chose comfort for I am six foot five, not a small person. And I don't like being squished into small cars. Uh, It's 1030. I have had a lot of fun, but it is that time where I must bid you adieu. And uh, But you know what? We'll be back tomorrow at 9.30. Why 9.30? I'm so glad you asked. Because we're joining the Jerry Agar Show on News Talk 1010. We're going to be talking to him about stuff and things and his audience. They're going to be, it's a call-in show. And we'll have you on TikTok asking questions and YouTube and Instagram. And 
Twitch and LinkedIn and everywhere that you watch. So it's it's all good. It is all good. Now I do want to pull up one thing that I you know it's it's almost silly that I'm, <laughs> that I'm talking about it now. I, I say it's almost silly because I totally forgot. You know, I was waiting when the chief when the chief is finished. We'll just talk about Vision Zero Enforcement Team and where they are today. But since you're watching now, I'll tell you where we is uh, today. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't already subscribed, followed, or or liked or shared, please do. Even if we're though we're ending the show shortly, it still helps. Tell people about us. You know, they can come watch the replay. All right. So, October 26th, where is Vision Zero Enforcement Team? And what is Vision Zero Enforcement Team? It is a group of officers that are dedicated to the enforcement and behavior-changing activity of issuing tickets. That's right. They are looking for people who are choosing to speed, drive aggressively, drive uh, distracted, or drive impaired. Uh, they're doing this issuing of tickets business because they want people to change that behavior. They want to issue a ticket so you don't have fun, so you change your behavior so you don't get another ticket again and you don't risk your life or the life of others because we know that those activities, those choices behind the wheel lead to serious injury and death. It's a whole part of the Vision Zero concept, which is about protecting vulnerable road users. And that includes, you know, riders, walkers, you know, not walkers, but we're talking about people who are pedestrians, cyclists, and everybody else who uses the road, uh, which is really just motorists, isn't it? I guess a skateboard, is a skateboarder or a pedestrian? I think they are. In any case, where are they today? 14 Division and 41 Division. That's Christie. That's the neighborhoods of Christie, Ossington, Annex, Little Italy, Dorset Park, Kennedy Road, or, uh, or Kennedy Park, I should say, Birchcliff, Cliffside. People live there. People want to be safe there, and they deserve to be. So uh, we're out there based on stats, you know, the, the big brain people telling us where to go every day. Yeah, that's where they are. Uh, if you are, if you're around tomorrow, join us. We'll be here. We'll be here. I'll be here at 6 a.m. So you can get on Volley and chat earlier. Uh, Volley is the free app where you can be part of our community and chat with us all the time. You can get that by going to our link tree, which is in the bio, or go to trafficcop.ca and you get all my social media stuff. All right. That's it. I'm out. Play the traffic song because I love it so much. And we'll, uh, we'll be back tomorrow at 9.30. See you then. Have a great day. Be safe. Drive sober. Uh, drive, le uh, oh, oh, Aaron's here. Park legally, please. Safely helps the traffic flow. Watch for pedestrians, look out for bikes, and don't drive like a jerk that no one likes. Yellow light, red light, green light. Driving safely is the way to go. Put down your cell phone, nobody needs you to text and drive on the DVP. Yellow light, red light, green light, go. Stop the stop signs, look both ways, then go. Seat belt, save your life indeed. And watch your driving, don't speed. Yellow light, red light, green light, go. Driving safely is the way to go. Don't drink and drive or smoke some weed because you might go to jail and not, not get, get freed. freed. Yellow light, red light, green light, go. Driving safely helps the traffic flow. Kayla says, listen to the traffic song at double speed sometime. It really rocks. I can only imagine, but uh, I leave it to the regular speed. Have a great day, everyone. Uh, be well, be safe. See you soon. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0.